Welcome to Electro Online. And now for an example that's a little bit more difficult than the previous one, we're going to try to find the area of one leaf of this function right here. The function defined by r equals 2 times the cosine of 2 theta. Again, we can draw the single leaf right here. Notice that we're just going to find the area of this leaf. We're going to indicate a small little area element, which is triangular shaped, so that the dA is therefore equal to 1 half r squared times d theta, which is basically the area of that small little triangle. Instead of writing r, we can write r as the function of theta, which is defined right here. So the function of theta would be 2 times the cosine of 2 theta. And to find the area of one leaf, we're going to integrate all the little dA's from our initial angle theta 1 to our final angle theta 2. So the integral from theta 1 to theta 2 of dA, and dA can be replaced by 1 half times the function squared times d theta. Now because of the symmetry, it may be easier to just find the area of a half a leaf and double that, so that way the first angle starts at zero, which makes things a little bit easier. So we're now going to take this integral, double it, but now start the integral from 0 to theta 2 instead of from theta 1 to theta 2. So it's the same thing, it just makes it easier whenever one of the limits is a 0. The hard part may be finding what that angle is. What is that integration angle theta sub 2? Now when you evaluate the function, let's say at 45 degrees, notice the function at 45 degrees is twice the cosine of 2 times 45 degrees, which is 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 is 0. So we can see that the function goes to 0 at an angle of 45 degrees, which then bounds that leaf right there by the angle of 45 degrees. When we plug in 90 degrees, 2 times the cosine of twice 90 is 2 times the cosine of 180, the cosine of 180 is negative 1, which therefore times 2 gives us a negative 2. That puts us right over here. So you can see that the angle indeed is limiting, at the 45 degree angle indeed is limiting the shape of that leaf on the upper side. So we have our angle correct now at 45 degrees as the limiting angle. So plugging in the equation, we now say that the area is equal to the integral from, and I guess I should put in the the 2 there, so it's equal to 2 times the area from 0 to 45 degrees of 1 half times the function squared. Now the function is defined right here, so it would be 2 times the cosine of 2 theta squared and times d theta. Okay, now we need to work that out, and we're going to bring the 1 half forward, so 2 times 1 half is 1. So this becomes equal to the integral from 0 to 45 degrees of this quantity squared, which would be, uh, let's see, that would be 4 times the cosine of 2 theta squared times d theta. We can bring the 4 out, but now we still have the cosine square of 2 theta. So now we need an identity. We know that the cosine square of theta can be written as 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta. So if we use this identity, and instead of theta, we use 2 theta, then of course we can apply it there as well. And bringing the 4 out, we can say that area is equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to 45 degrees. Instead of writing the cosine square of 2 theta, we're going to use this identity, so it's 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of double the angle, since the angle started 2 theta, 2 theta, we now have 4 theta as double the angle, and we no longer have to square that, times d theta. Okay, at this time I think the 1 half can come out and make that a 2, but we may want to now write that as two separate integrals. So now we can say that the area is equal to 2 times the first integral from 0 to 45 degrees, of 1 times d theta, which is simply d theta, plus the second angle, I mean the second part of the integral, that would be the integral from 0 to 45 degrees of the cosine of 4 theta d theta. So the cosine of 4 theta d theta. But since we have an angle here of 4 theta, we need the proper differential. That means we're going to need, and let me use this, oh, this pen right here. All right, we need a 4d theta here, so we need a 1 over 4 there to compensate for the 4. I think my red pens are kind of dying. All right, there we go. So now we're ready to integrate both of the integrals. So let's do that. So we have the area is equal to 2 times 
d theta integrated becomes theta from 0 to 45 degrees, which is pi over, ah, that would be over 4, plus 2 times 1 quarter, that would be 1 half, times the integral of the cosine of 4 theta. theta. Now, the, the, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so the integral of the cosine is the positive sine, so this becomes the positive sine of 4 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, now, when I evaluate that, notice the sine of 4 theta, when I plug in the upper limit, 4 times pi over 4 is pi, and the sine of pi is 0. Plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is 0 as well, so this whole integral, that simply becomes 0, so we only have to evaluate this. Plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get pi over 4. So this becomes equal to 2 times pi over 4, which is equal to pi divided by 2. And that then becomes the area of this particular leaf, or the leaf of this particular function. Now, that's only one of the leaves. If we want to find the total area, we have to multiply it times 4. So you see the total area of all four, all four leaves combined would equal 2 pi. And that's how we utilize the same technique for something a little bit more complicated like that. But if you follow the rules, it's not so difficult to do. That's how it's done.